doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great. It's Friday. We've got Halloween tomorrow, although I kind of forgot that we have Halloween tomorrow just because I do. But it is one of my favorite holidays, so I'm sure yeah. I'll find something fun to do that's safe. So, of course, or even just have like a movie marathon. I think that's what me and my family are gonna do. Yes, Halloween Town, Hocus Pocus, maybe yes. one, scary one, maybe maybe one, <laughs> big maybe. <laughs> I'll watch it at like noon when the sun's still out. That's that's a good plan. We'll see. I'll I'll think about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but speaking of Halloween, there's costumes involved in Halloween. And you just posted a TikTok where you're wearing a fabulous costume. Can you <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all about that? I just want to know why you held off for so long before releasing it, because it is iconic. Okay, so it was for my dance recital. And the theme of that year's recital was dancing through the decades. And so each class had a different kind of decade that they had to cover with their dance. And for my jazz class, we were the highest level jazz class, so they let us do the 2000s and 2010s and big pop stars from that and so each girl got to do about 45 second routine as a major pop star and they picked me to be Justin Bieber. I was thrilled. Um, I was a very big believer from the start so I was more than happy, more than happy to do it and my mom had so much fun putting together that costume. I mean we went to Walmart and she found all the pieces and then kind of like reconstructed them and made it to where it looked just like his original outfit that he wear that he wore on the tour and yeah so I, I dressed up as Justin Bieber and I performed baby and it was pretty great <laughs> it was so great and I also am a big believer and I vividly remember that outfit and it was in like his never say never movie I remember yes. uh, so Such a good movie <laughs> I know it really is I thought it was brilliant and um I love that you were able to do that at like such a young age and just there's so much creativity involved. I thought it was great. I thought it was so Thank you. <laughs> um, um I have to ask, has he seen it? Do you know? Has he like tweeted about it or anything? He hasn't. I'm I'm kind of hoping he does. Part of me is like this is a little embarrassing <laughs> if he does see it, but I I'd, I'd love it if he saw it. I think it'd be really funny. <laughs> I'd love to hear his thoughts, you know? Yes. I know he's, like, definitely, like, reposted TikToks or, like, costumes and stuff, so I think it's just a matter of time, you know? Maybe you're gonna... Let's, fingers crossed. Let's hope. <laughs> well, you might just have to post it every day, but I right, don't know. Just keep reposting till he sees it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, Sam, <laughs> I did that before when I wanted him to tweet me a happy birthday. Not even gonna lie. So, sorry, Justin. I... Sorry, Twitter. <laughs> So, so you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's so cringy. <laughs> um, but let's fast forward to the present. You're on Julian the Phantoms, which has yeah. been wildly, wildly popular. And uh, you know, it's obviously great that it's popular in the first place, but especially during quarantine, you weren't able to do like this huge traditional premiere and all these press right. junkets and all that, but still the show pulled through and it shows that people just when something's good they're going to share it with their friends yeah. with their family so um this is might seem like kind of a weird question but did you <laughs> anticipate it to get this big because you might have honestly because it's kenny ortega like kenny ortega or right a bit honestly like i i knew going into it having it be with kenny ortega there's definitely a possibility for it to get the amount of hype that it is getting now but I don't think any of us expected it, it to blow up the way it did. I mean, I think that was something that was kind of shocking, but at the same time, we knew we were making something really special mm -hmm. and we knew that it was something that could resonate with audience members if they watched it. So we knew it was something very unique and it meant a lot to us. So to see the audiences reacting to the way that we were hoping and even more so in so yeah. many ways, it's kind of mind blowing. It's honestly a little insane. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's so, so, so great. And what I love about the cast is it's a lot of people that um, were either used to be on Disney or Nickelodeon or right. things like that. I love um, Boo Boo Stewart. He's one of my favorite actors. So, of course, it was awesome. Um, so, I'm wondering, was there anyone in the cast that you had worked with before? Or you, you, I'm sure you've like heard of them and like maybe seen them, but strictly worked right. with. Strictly worked with, funny enough, Owen, because we were on Night Squad on Nickelodeon together. Yes, right. So I worked with Owen. I mean, I've been working with him since I was 16 and I'm 20 now. So it's kind of crazy to see how our work kind of relationship 
met up once again for another project that was really insane. Um, but some of our um, executive producers, Dan and Dave, they worked on the pilot of Night Squad. So kind of got to work with them again. And then our two creators of Night Squad, Sean and Mark, they're also working on Julie and the Phantoms. So it's like a lot of relationships are kind of forming again. But yeah, I mean, I worked with Owen, like, like I said, since 16 years old. And he's one of my closest friends in real life. So to work on another project together was really, really cool. And it was really special too, especially since we had the number All Eyes on Me together. I remember when I first found that out, I was like, out of all three of the phantoms that could have done this number, of course, it's going to be him. Like, of course. Yes. Oh, I love it. And how cool that you were able to take some of your Nickelodeon family to Netflix. I think a lot of times there, there is some overlap, but sometimes it's just a completely new thing. I remember I was speaking to Jack Griffo from Thundermans and then yeah. He had to go to Alexa and Katie actually missed like the Thunderman's rap party and was completely different, you know, completely different right. cast, uh, crew. So I think it's so cool that you're able to kind of hold on to a little bit of Night Squad going. In. Yeah, exactly. And especially going into a project that is so new and so out of my comfort zone because Night Squad, I mean, all we did on that was act. That was strictly mm -hmm. it. But going into a musical series that had dancing, singing, just everything thrown into one. And then for Owen and Maddie and Charlie and Jeremy I mean instruments as well yeah. so to go from just one thing and then be thrown into something else it was really nice to have that comfortable relationship where it's like okay we're all experiencing this together so it's good yeah. <laughs> a little bit comfortable so it was it was really nice yeah I didn't even think of that it is like it's almost like you're stacking talents now I mean there's acting but then you're also learning all these other things um and you've actually been dancing singing for quite some time and what I love is that you're very passionate about it beyond just it being a passion of yours but something you want to share and share the importance of it so do you just want to talk a little bit about the work you've done just with schools and just spreading the message of the importance of like arts education yeah of course I mean I've been in musical theater since I was 11 years old but I started dancing when I was three and a half and dancing was definitely my first passion and it was something that I really loved. And then as I got older and kind of found musical theater, that was like, wow, this is what I want to do. Acting, singing, dancing, like that's it for me. That was like, this is all I want to do for the rest of my life. And so as I've gotten older, I've seen a lot of schools and programs that are being cut within the schools. And I, I think it's so heartbreaking and so sad because I think the arts can make such a huge difference on somebody's life. I mean, I know it changed my life completely. And so to see so many programs that are being cut for others to make room, I, I think it's really sad. And I mean, it's also a proven fact that if you're in the arts and you have some sort of connection with the arts, it improves grades, it improves your social skills, it improves so much. I mean, I know going into it, I was such a shy kid when I was just in dance. I was so shy. But then as I got into musical theater, I really started to kind of break out of my shell. And now it's just like, I feel like I'm a different person. So it means a lot to me when people are watching our show and they get inspired by it to maybe pick up an instrument or to start singing. There's been so many videos we've seen of people saying, I stopped playing the piano or I stopped playing guitar years ago, but I saw your show and I loved the songs and I wanted to learn it. And that just makes us all so incredibly happy because it feels like, we've inspired them to do something extra with their life and kind of find that passion again. So it, it's really cool and it's a really amazing feeling. I love that. And it's so validating to hear that people like your show beyond just being a fan, but apply it to their lives. And right. I totally understand about um, arts education being cut. I went to a performing arts elementary school. We had vocal music we had instrumental music, like two separate classes, dance, wow. all these things, and it was so great. And then when I went to middle school, I went to a different middle school, but the arts were cut and it's so sad. I mean, it would be one thing if there was no connection to like learning and whatnot, but there is, like you said, it is so proven that this helps and it helps kids to not feel like they're stuck in a classroom for six hours. A exactly. Day. Emotions. So exactly. It gives something for them to really look forward to at school too. If they're really into it, mm -hmm. they get so excited and then it makes them want to go to school. So it's like, you know, exactly. Uh, yeah, there's a lot that needs to be changed about the public school system, but that's for another Absolutely. day. <laughs> that's for a whole other Like, I don't, I cannot speak to that right now because I don't have all my facts straight, but yes, I overall agree, and I would hope everyone watching would see that there is 
real value in keeping those programs. Absolutely. Even if they're after school programs, like that's still at least the opportunity is there. So exactly. It's a lot. Um, (laughs) Anyway, I also wanted to talk about your character. You're the popular girl and you're kind of sassy. You're obviously so nice. So I'm wondering, thank you. Of course. I'm wondering, do you prefer playing characters that are not like you or do you prefer playing characters that are like you, like this super sweet person? Right. I think both can be a lot of fun. I mean, I I definitely play characters that are a lot more like myself in real life. Um, When I did Secret Lives of Cheerleaders, that was very much me. She was kind of chill. Ava was very new and kind of like new kid on the block. And honestly, that's how I felt when I first came out to LA. And she was just like sweet, trying to make friends. And that I felt a very strong connection to. But I have to say, playing someone that's so far out of my comfort zone and like not me has been such a blast and honestly I just love playing Carrie because I feel like I don't always have to smile or be super excited and the lines our writers are geniuses because some of these one-liners she has uh, they would make me crack up when I first read the script and I it was hard to try and even say especially the people who are so sweet and like Maddie and Jada and even Sasha like poor Sasha Carrie put him through the ringer. <laughs> she was not letting him have it. And so having to do all those scenes with people who are so nice was a little, I hope you don't think I'm like this in real life. But luckily we got to hang out before filming. Good. So it was, it was better. But I, I think I have a little bit more fun playing characters that are a little bit more outside my comfort zone, for sure. Awesome. And it shows that you can play people that are unlike you and speaks to your um what you can do as an actress and uh, yeah I'm sure they all know like this is strictly acting but I've always wondered like you probably still feel like you have to kind of put that disclaimer hold on my light Mm -hmm. turned off there we go I like um I I press the button so there we go (laughs) um sorry about that but I (laughs) I know that um season one was wildly successful we haven't heard yet about season two I haven't what is going on (laughs) <laughs> that time I actually did not touch it. This is like some Halloween scary. You've got some ghosts in your house right now. I mean, that's <laughs> now I really think you've got some phantoms in that. <laughs> and I don't believe in that stuff. Like I really don't. But now I'm questioning it. Um, I'm so confused. I'm so sorry. We might just have You're- to bad lighting for the rest of this but so, it looks good from what I can see you look great oh thank you okay I'm just <laughs> gonna freeze so like I I give up I'm so sorry I give up <laughs> don't apologize you're totally good technical difficulties zoom like we're chilling you are good <laughs> thank you honestly is it really a zoom call if something doesn't go wrong so right it, it wouldn't be No, it's not. Or like even an Instagram live. So I'm glad you understand. (laughs) I completely understand. You are good. You still look great. (laughs) Um, Going back to what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by a phantom. um, I had phantom. Has been so successful and we haven't heard yet about season two, but I'm sure it's coming. So if it does come, um, what characteristics would you like to further explore in your character? Ooh, that's such a good one. That's such an in detail one. Um, you know, I'd like to see, which I know a lot of the fans want to see, but I would like to personally see kind of maybe a friendship happen between Julie and Carrie. I don't think, however their friendship was prior to their falling out, I don't think they'll ever be back to that best friend relationship, at least at this point. But I'd love to see Carrie's hard exterior kind of soften Mm -hmm. a little bit and maybe see her be a little more sentimental towards Julie and I, I think Carrie does miss her friend and I, I think that was very clear in the last episode she misses her and she's proud of her but I still there's still something there that Carrie's just not wanting to address right now that some something happened in their falling out something happened between the two of them and so I'd love to reach on a little bit more of that history mm-hmm. with them so I, I'd love to see Carrie just kind of soften a little bit with Julie I think that's something that the fans would like to see as well Definitely. And it kind of, it's hard, like, even in real life to, like, be confrontational and have those difficult conversations. Absolutely. If someone saw you doing that and having that heart-to-heart, it would 
maybe empower them to do the same in their real life and see that. Right. And exactly. Normally it's, I mean, sometimes you have something to lose, but a lot of times like there's nothing to lose just speaking out. So yeah, I think that would be an awesome thing to see in season two. And I really think there will be a season two. Like I'd be so shocked if there wasn't. So <laughs> honestly, I mean, we're all just, I know the fans are constantly asking us like, are you guys, you guys getting ready for season two? We truly have no idea. And we're just sitting here like hoping, praying. And I mean, the only thing we can ask is that they keep telling their friends, hey, <laughs> tell your friends, tell them to watch it, stream it, um, listen to our album, just everything. Talk about the show because the fan interaction is so important yeah. when it comes to possibly getting another season. So I mean, we hope we really want to come back. We all want to come back so bad. Well, I, I, I really hope so as well. So yeah, everyone keep tweeting, keep listening, tell everyone you know, and that of course does help that fan interaction, like you said. Yes. <laughs> um, well, Savannah, thank you so much for hopping on this interview with me. It was so great catching up with you. Um, do you just want to plug your all your social media for us as well as any other projects that people can be on the lookout for? Yeah, of course. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I just got that. Um, at Savannah Lee May. It's my full name for all of it. So you can follow me there. <laughs> yes, and uh, TikTok is where you guys can all see the iconic Justin Bieber dance. Of course. <laughs> I'm so excited. He's going to see it one day. We'll make it happen. Someday. Let's hope. Guys, let's hope. That'd be so great. <laughs> it would be. Oh, I am impatiently am waiting for that day. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Well, Savannah, thank you again so much. Thank you. When it's safe in LA, we'll definitely have to do a follow-up in-person interview and hopefully- yes, I love that. Yeah, hopefully by then season two will be out or in the works or something, so. Let's hope. <laughs> thank you again and have an awesome weekend and an awesome Halloween. Yes, you too. Happy Halloween. <laughs> thank you. Bye.